Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and try to make you guys kind of like a order of importance for gearing, but at the same time it's less of that and more so uh, me explaining my item choices and kind of when I upgrade due to player driven economy and just because we're so early into the league right now, it's a little bit hard to get all this information. So what I kind of went ahead and wrote up is basically kind of like what I have on my website what I want on every piece of gear, and then we're gonna talk about when to go for some bigger chase items slash modifications to the build. So before we get started, I think it's important to understand what you actually want on your gear. So again, this is for the most part explained on like PoE Vault written, PoE Vault written guide, the League Start video, the potential POB, and the website, but a YouTube video to help reinforce it never really hurts, right? So this right here is gonna be like Literally in white maps slash yellow maps, you are getting this set up right now. This does not apply to SSF. This is specifically for trade league right now. So, um, you know, weapon, some high, some form of high increase around 80 to 100 percent with plus one gems or with also like with multi. So what does that mean? That means my weapon, for example, has 40 percent alley base with 56% fire base, so that puts me to 96%, so I, I'm good there. I've got 18 fire multi, and I have plus one, and I have a little bit of chance to ignite, so this weapon is more than good. We are literally level 98. I have done all content, including like the feared and stuff, with this weapon. So an item level four weapon like this gets you all the way through the game. How do you get a weapon like this? Buy an item level four scepter and come over to your bench here and spam three forge fire. You can also try it with fossils. You could try it with essences. Um, you know, unfortunately, it is going to take you quite a few tries. RNG is a bitch, but once you get it, you're done for a long time. How you specifically get the void base? Uh, you have to buy death cards and actually get a mantra goals. Then you have to turn the mantra goals in on an item level or a level four character, which fixes your void scepter to be item level four. Although it's a mantra goals. Then you have to corrupt it into a Void Scepter. Then you have to buy four other Void Scepters, I think, corrupt them. And then you sell them to the vendor and you get five back. You know, you sell five and you get one back. DLDR, that part's not important. You you really just want a weapon, right? If you lose 30% Ellie because you don't understand how to do the Void, that's not really important at this stage in the game. What's important is you just have a weapon, right? All right, next up is going to be your helmet. So again, this is pre-Elder Helmet. The focus of your helmet is going to be life, res, and chaos. Um, I cannot emphasize how much chaos res you need now with all of the arc nemesis just everywhere, right? Chris said they toned down on mobs spamming their arc nemesis stuff, and they very well may have cut the the um, the spamming of some arc nemesis modifiers by like 50%, but like I'll use an example, Toxic. Toxic puts like this ball above your head. I mean, I did a ritual yesterday. I think I counted nine toxic balls throughout the entire ritual. If you're walking around ray class with like negative 20 chaos res, if two of those balls pop you, you're dead. Like you're just dead. Playing Righteous Fire, we are chatting it up, running into everything's face. I consider chaos res to be mandatory. Um, again, just me. That's kind of my personal opinion. But like I get every single day hundreds of questions of people telling me that, you know, I have this much max res, this much armor, this much chaos res. And... Uh, well, not Chaos Res, but Curse Resist. They're giving me all their layers, and then I ask for their Chaos, and they're like, oh, I have, like, negative 17%. That's probably what you're dying to, right? Uh, also, Flat or Percent Regen works on Helmet, but it's like a Fluff Stat. I call it a Fluff Stat because we don't want to be reliant on our Helmet for defensive stats, because eventually we're going to go for an offensive Helmet. Gloves! Gloves are always something you can invest currency into um, whenever, because, for example, your gloves, like, if you look at mine, what you really want to do is use your eater of worlds and you're searing xr currency so that's going to be located over here so uh if i go here and click exotic the eldritch icker when i hold alt is rolling the eater of worlds modifier so eldritch icker can be a damage multiplier if you get yourself exposure even if you have the lowest tier possible right you still get exposure minus 11 uh, fire res to a boss is huge when you get something like this make sure you immediately respect this node here to the minus 18 Ellie Mastery. That's very big damage. Um, then on gloves, I always recommend either Dex or High Life and High Res. Uh, if you have a prefix open for plus one, that's extremely strong because it gives you 10% AOE and gives you plus one gems to your auras, uh, which is very, very, very strong. Also, if you don't have an Elder Helm, you could technically put your 
like your fire trap in your gloves for the plus one it, it would also work uh boots just standard 20 life or 20 to 30 movement speed life res uh don't want to invest a lot in your boots because you're aiming for legacy of fury i think at the time these are like 30 c these are probably with the exception of the six link the boots and the six link are like your number one first grab always like you just get them right away right the standard order of priority i think will work um on my website Th this is more of i guess just in depth right so shield coming right off of killing Katava, I would grab a Dawnbreaker or an Ons Heritage personally. Um, if you feel like your regeneration is awful, grab a Rise of the Phoenix and then gear into one of these. These simply offer better mitigation. I think overall Dawnbreaker is better. Uh, body armor, six link armor ES base for easy colors. Um, so for example, armor ES base. I personally was crafting with Loathing Essence. Um, there are three essences that I would recommend. You have Loathing Essence, you have Greed Essence, and you have, I believe it is Envy Essence. One of these purple ones, which one is it? There we go. Right, so to explain what each one does, um, the Shrieking Essence of Loathing gives us the um, Mana Reservation Efficiency, which is going to be important when you're trying to set up extra auras. If you're just in the standard 3 aura setup, it's not really important. I would say the Loathing Essence helps you get the 4th aura, so at the moment, I'm in the fifth aura setup where I have the term, malevolence, tempest, skitter, and purity of ice, but you're only doing purity if you're melding, and you're probably only doing melding if you're Aegis. So that's already a very small amount of players. So I'm not trying to explain that. It's basically you're going to be running the term, malevolence, um, Sk or tempest shield, and skitter bot is what a lot of people are going to aim for. Um, so the deafening essence helps a lot there for the mono reservation efficiency. I believe it saves you out on needing like an enlighten, for example. Uh, so it just helps a lot. And I'm not going to talk too much about the aura reservation because for the life of me, the POB is explained in such a good manner. I'm not trying to butcher my POB right now. So if you have aura, um, aura efficiency issues, really go look at the POB. It does explain it very well. Uh, anyway, Envy is good for chaos res. Uh, as you can see here, it gives 31 to 35 Chaos Res. And then this one is for armor, but or for life. But I don't know. I feel like Deafening Essence of Greed is not really that important. I think Chaos Res is more important personally, especially in the early game. But yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it. Also, Eldritch Implicits on my website. I have a, an example of so many different types of Eldritch Implicits that are usable. Uh, for example, you should not be rolling Cold Res unless you are in a Melding of the Flesh setup. Um, so there's a lot of really good things on there. Definitely check out the website. It takes like two seconds. Okay, from here, uh, belt. So belt is very important because either A, you can use an immortal flesh for Giga regen, or B, instead of an immortal flesh, you can use something kind of like mine, which is basically, mine is actually a bad example. The only reason I'm keeping mine is because I hit tier one life, tier two armor, prefix open for increased damage, Flask effect duration helps after the flask changes, and Chaos Res is very nice. Um, I would much prefer to have like a sick life regen suffix, especially to double down on that Fertile Catalyst, but this works for now. Works for me, I'm, you know, I'll switch it another time. Yep, uh, my Abyssal Jewel is basically Res, Life, ES, and a little bit of Flat Fire Dispels for my combustion in my boots. Okay, Rings and Amulet. So... Rings, I recommend uh, Life Res, Chaos Res, Dex, something around this. Uh, you have another option where you can use a Delirium Essence on your ring to get Dot Multi. Um, this, is, this is basically like a pre-melding of the flesh setup. Because if you have melding, this is a lot harder to incorporate. Uh, if you're going to do something with the Delhi Essence crafting, since Delhi or, um, Essences can be a bit expensive, make sure you buy Fractured um, Ring Bases. Preferably with like Dex or Energy Shield or Life, so you don't have to worry about that. And the, I mean, the Fractured Ring Base is probably only going to be like 5C anyway, so you're just saving yourself on a lot of currency here. Amulet. Amulet is big. Your amulet should be offensive. Your amulet should give you damage. The only exception to this is like Replica at Xeris Foible, which I just don't think is really necessary anymore. So amulet, I recommend plus one gems or at least 18% dot multi. So if you look at my amulet, I have plus one, no dot multi, but plus one and thick resistances. Remember that because we're playing RF, we want to get as much damage anywhere we can. So make sure when you get your amulet, you anoint something like Arsonist. Arsonist is super cheap, super affordable. It gives you 10% fire multi and gives you a little bit of regen. So very, very, very good. 
All right, and that takes us to the last part, which is our flasks. So honestly, for your flasks, um, the, the number one thing to understand is you should not be copying exactly what I do, right? So don't try to get movement speed on your Quicksilver. Don't try to get armor on your Granite. Don't try to get the region on your Ruby, right? Like you, wherever it happens to roll, you're happy with it, right? The more important thing is that you literally just have gain X charges when hit and use charges when reach full. So at least your flasks are actually automated. Not having your granite flask on is way worse than not securing a good suffix, right? So this is very, very important. Also, if you look at my armor, I have like 38k. With my flasks up and molten shell, I have 61k. So flasks make a very big difference, guys. Um, the trick for rolling your flasks is quite simple. You're basically going to get item level 80 flasks if you want to guarantee that, uh, that roll. You can get them really easily now with the new Arc Nemesis pooping out flasks. You're going to transmute i mean i can try to do like a real quick like two second example here but it's not going to be very good so you're going to bobble it you're going to transmute it right so if you get a good suffix augment for a prefix um and then just pretty much roll till you see three charges or something good so even two charge works right like that two charge right there you could buy the three percent life regen off someone and bam that's a usable flask right like i have a two charge right here and it works just fine um, so yeah, you're pretty much just going to be doing this. A lot of people ask, where do I do the use charges reach full? You literally do them right here. Bam, you're done. Okay, I'm going to talk about a little bit more like nitty gritty stuff. So, uh, and again, it's really hard to make this video. So if you guys want something different, let me know. I'm, I'm trying to do this in my spare time before the stream. So when do I drop purity of elements for Skitter? So this is a big one that comes up all the time. I get people saying, my elemental resistance is capped without purity. I'm just going to drop it. And if you do that, you're dead. Why? Because you're now getting hit by shock. You're getting chilled. You're getting frozen. And that's really all that matters. So the spa as to when you can drop purity, you have two options. A, you can follow the POB for the Aegis Aurora setup. And you can kind of path the way I have. Where I come down here, grab glancing blows, take these three nodes here. Then I come up here and grab these three. So the only problem is I don't know if you would actually grab arcane guarding if depending on your shield, but the whole point of this is to make use of Tempest Shield. So Tempest Shield gives you a spell block and gives you shock immune. So at the moment I'm like 75, 74. You can see that located right here. If I were to pull off my Tempest Shield, I go to 24. So my Tempest Shield quite literally is spell blocking my character. Now to justify doing this without an Aegis Aurora, you would want a Shaper life gain on block shield. That means that you're rolling a Shaper Shield to get 5% life gain on block or something. If you can get a really high flat value, that might suffice as well because we don't actually have a crazy amount of HP. Of course, my HP is lower than normal because I, you know, I have not um, just crafted a lot of my gear and I'm melding the flesh. Um, yeah, so that is a very, very, very good way of acquiring um, Tempest Shield for Shock Immune. I would even say that this setup would surpass this random shield not random shield but the unique shield setup i would say a block based shield will be better for mapping um yeah so that pretty much ties in with the whole being block based explaining that uh as for why you want to run skitterbot skitterbot's like 25 to 30 percent of our total damage because shock is a damage multiplier and skitterbots give a trap and mine damage multiplier which fire trap is a trap Okay, Aegis Aurora. When do I go for an Aegis Aurora? Well, unfortunately, Aegis Aurora is um, not really going down in price. It's basically 14 Divine Orbs. So I would not go for Aegis Aurora unless A, you're trying to push for level 100, or B, you just literally want to face tank the world. That's pretty much what it comes down to, right? Do you want to face tank the world, and do you want to level to 100? Aegis Aurora is a very good option for either of these two. So that's pretty much when Aegis comes in. It is really not needed to do any content in the game, but if you want to do it effortlessly, that's where Aegis Aurora comes in. Uh, Cluster Jewel. This is a hot topic as well. What Cluster Jewel do I use and when do I go Cluster Jewel? So Cluster Jewel, I level my character to like 94, 95 without even using it. It's totally fine. You don't have to use one right away. So the drop for Cluster Jewel is basically trading off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12 13 so you're essentially going to chop this right here to go into a cluster jewel here however unless you have a very good cluster jewel it's actually not really very worth it to chop this off 
Now, going second cluster jewel is worth it, which is when we drop this, but that's a that's not for this video. So trying to justify dropping this into a cluster jewel is pretty difficult. So for me personally, um, I dropped it when I needed more jewel sockets for aura reservation. But basically when I was trying to go melding of the flesh for the most part, I needed a small mono reservation cluster jewel. So this is why I set up a cluster. Now, as for what cluster you wanna go for, as long as you have prismatic heart here, right? On this outside, I think your cluster jewel is already pretty good, assuming it's eight passive. But take that with a grain of salt, spend a little bit of time in POB to understand if this is actually even worth it for you to do. I would say a cluster jewel is not a big focus, again, unless you desperately need those jewel sockets. Okay, Elder Helmet. So Elder Helmet is something I would try picking up when you're looking for single target. This is usually aimed at like red tier maps. Um, Elder Helmet, you're aiming for item level 82 plus, your armor or armor ES. You're using Essence of Horror and you're hoping to see Conk or Burn with a 30% more Ellie. That's it, you're done, right? That's pretty much it. A lot of times you are gonna have to sacrifice some stats on your helmet for those extra links. For example, mine only has a 33 life roll and no prefix open, right? Brutal Restraint, okay. Brutal Restraint is a big dex fixer. It also massively helps for clear. If you are trying to use one, say for example, like mine, which gives eight second onslaught on hit, I get questions all the time about how to use Brutal Restraint. There is a program going around that I'm sure someone will link in the comments. Um, when they link it, you'll basically have an understanding of how to search Brutal Restraints. Alternatively, you can do the very annoying method, which I did, which is basically copying every Brutal Restraint from Path of Exile on the search, and then putting it manually into POB, and then checking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and seeing what they have for you. For example, the only reason I have Light of Divinity allocated is because it also gives 4% life, which is pretty sick. Okay, Awaken Gems. So I would say Awaken Gems are not a priority unless you're the pl like, type of player who wants to play for like a month on this build. Um, the reason I bring this up is because the Awaken Gems don't really benefit you until they hit level five. So for example, I have like Awaken Swift Affliction, which you don't need at all because it's gonna get replaced. Awakened Burn, but it's only level three. Uh, Awakened Ellie Focus, it's only level two. And uh, Awakened Ink AoE, which is level three. But like these sadly are not really giving me much damage. They need to hit a break point of five. The only exception is Awakened Ink AoE, because Awakened Ink AoE does give more damage right away. So this one's actually not too bad, but I'm pretty sure it's like a divine. It's actually like three divines, so that's not really worth it in the sense of progression. Don't worry about that. Enlighten. So I personally did not need an Enlighten until I went Melding of the Flesh, and I think I could have set it up without it, but this is when I personally started using Enlighten, um, which was when I was trying to squeeze in my Purity of Ice, which again, that's after my Skitter Bot. That's the end, end game version. That's when you want to use Melding of the Flesh here. Then the last thing to cover is the Charisma Anoint. I believe the Charisma Anoint is really helpful when you are trying to fit in your is it your your third aura i think it's I when you're you, it, it's it's again this is tricky because it all depends on if you're using a cluster jewel for reservation or not but like your standard double aura is always in your triple aura is actually even in so okay so it's when you're going for the fourth one right so i guess for us it would be either like determination malevolence skitter bot and then using charisma for tempest shield or you're gonna go Determination, Malevolence, Tempest Shield, use Charisma for a Skitter Bot, I believe. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Of course, I put a big emphasis on using Path of Building, and the reason I bring a huge emphasis to Path of Building is players have to understand how to be flexible, because if you're trying to follow a meta build, say, unfortunately, like mine, you need to be able to explore different avenues and feel comfortable, otherwise you're gonna be spending 20, 30, 40 divines for a character that's worth 10, just because everyone is trying to do the exact same thing. So the purpose of this is to try to bring more information for you guys, so you understand sort of how to progress. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope that helped you guys out. If it didn't, my apologies, I'll try to in the next video. Uh, of course, if you guys have any questions, don't forget to drop them down in the comments below, or feel free to ask in Global 911 on our live stream, or my live stream, and or the Discord. Anyway, 
I'm gonna catch you guys all later. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, don't forget, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, you can catch me streaming live every day but Mondays. See you guys all on Tuesday.